Pretty warm today. I'm trying to film the nice sunset and I'm getting attacked by midges. It's that time already. I think I, I think I already got bitten. Is there a mayfly? I'm not totally sure. I'm not sure. But the flies that only live in May yeah. to procreate. This is a great cherry tree, it has delivered lots of cherries. I'm still not quite done with all the cherries that I've picked and frozen all around Perth. No bone.
Ooh, they smell really nice. I have no idea what this is. These look so spiky, but they're actually so soft. Very pleasant. Bernie, 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 <laughs> hi. A pet sitting the dog. He's never been here. Everything smells of other dogs. He's having a sniff feast. Very moody day today as well. Are you eating grass? Light is coming in. You can barely see Canoe Hill anymore. This is what I look like these days. Having a dog is hard work. Just level of entertainment you have to put in to keep a dog. <laughs> We managed to tire him out.
we're under the bridge in the middle of the river. When the water gets low, you can just come over like this. My little critter. I think I might have stepped on it. Poor thing. It's got a nice colour. It's got a pretty orange colour. What have you got to say about the Cleveland Dyke? Um, well, it's a Neolithic Cursus monument. So uh, basically, a Cursus is a very just big, long embankment. Uh, I'm not sure how many there are, but there's, it's basically um, just going all right through this wood uh, to the northwest and southeast. Mm -hmm. um, it includes a round or oval barrow, uh, a long barrow, and cursus and bank barrow, so it's was, it was probably used for burial, but uh, it might also have been for uh, processions and things like that as well, Yeah. You know, just because of the length of the monument. Um, Can we see the barrows? Are they, would they be... Um, I think they're marked where we are. Oh right, okay. Uh, um, I, I didn't double check for where exactly the barrows are. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's, uh, well, it's a quote here from a book uh, uh, detailing the excavations. Cleveland Dyke comprises first a pair of ditches between 38 metres and 50 metres apart. Uh, the bank of the dike survives as an upstanding earth work for almost exactly uh, 1,800 meters, and uh, yeah, it's, it's it's actually surprisingly poor in archaeological remains, apart from the place at Lit Lure. Yeah. Um, but uh, all they've really found is uh, some flint scatters, so just bits of flint, uh, and they're sort of dated to the late Neolithic and early Bronze Age. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been d dated to between the late fifth millennium BC and the mid to late fourth millennium BC. Um, and uh, it has similar dimensional patterns to long barrows with widely spaced ditches in southern England. So an example of that would be uh, Nutbane at Wayland Smithy in uh, Oxfordshire and West Kennet in Wiltshire. Um, it's aligned to North Ballow Hill to the southeast and the Hill of Lethendi to the northwest over there. Uh, or Lethendi or however it's pronounced. Um, so it's been suggested that uh, um, the, the rising sun uh, at North Ballow Hill occurred around Halloween in the Neolithic. So, yeah. but the archaeologists they're not sort of certain about that. It's just a suggestion. Even though there are similarities to uh, monuments from Southern England, um, Cursus monuments defined by posts and pits uh, are only found in Scotland, uh, and they're absent from certain parts of Scotland, including uh, Fife, the Borders, mm -hmm. Galloway. Uh, and Murray and the Highlands. Uh, they're they're pretty much they're pretty much only found in the lowlands. These kind of things, hmm. um, and they do seem to be associated then with the agriculture where most of the Neolithic farmers were living. Uh, there really wasn't as much uh, arable land in the Highlands. So, so, what about the Roman connection? The Roman connection is is purely just because um, these cursus monuments. Well, a cursus in Latin is a um, just a long uh kind of track for chariots yeah so it's um uh it's elongated and then at the end you know that it's uh um got the corner uh, yeah. where the chariots would go along and turn around and come back the way uh it's just i suppose a superficial resemblance um you know uh, they didn't have chariots in the neolithic they didn't have domesticated horses so they wouldn't have used them for that they would have if they used them for processions it would all have been on foot um so it's it's just a coincidence. They just look really similar. And initially, archaeologists thought that this was a Roman uh, cursus, but when they excavated it, they found that no, it's uh, Neolithic. Yeah.
this is littler. Um, it's just a farmstead. Uh, but in this field right behind me, uh, they excavated a uh, Neolithic structure uh, because they wanted to find out more about uh, structures associated with the Cleveland Dyke because uh, the Cleveland Dyke was so poor in archaeological remains. The structure is uh, what they're calling a probable mortuary structure. Uh, it's very similar to um, a couple found, so one at Balfarg Riding School in Fife, and another at Balbride in Aberdeenshire. Mm. Um, and what they, they reckon these basically were, were structures uh, without roofs. So they think that uh, they were probably had some sort of like platforms where they exposed dead bodies uh, before then burying them at a later point. Um, so uh, the pottery finds uh, are the style from the late ne Neolithic called um, uh, grooved ware. Um, and this type of pottery probably comes from Orkney originally, but the interesting thing about the, uh, the pottery that they found here at Little Ur is that it bears the most similarity to pottery found at two places called Hill End and Wellbray in Lanarkshire. Um, and uh, the, the pottery from those um, uh, sites in, uh, in turn uh, are similar to pottery from uh, Yorkshire and uh, Durrington Walls. And the decoration on the pottery from here as well is similar to um, a place called Beckton in Dumfrieshire. So, uh, what it's basically showing is that uh, I guess you could say that it's probably some sort of uh, like a colony of people from uh, Lanarkshire specifically. Because if the pottery isn't similar to um, pottery found at other sites in Perthshire and Fife, that would suggest that the people coming here are from elsewhere. Mm. So probably Lanarkshire. So, um, so it just shows that in the, in the Neolithic you had different uh, groups of people uh, just moving about uh, to different places. We don't know like uh, why or how they would have done that or how this worked in terms of like the people already living in the area. Um, but yeah, that's that's basically what we have from here. Yeah. So here's uh, where the Cleveland Lake picks up and then runs back along. And supposedly traces of it also ran along all the way down there, but they seem to be covered up by a field nowadays. Many bunnies suddenly. Oh. I'm not sure if, if they're exactly the same type because their um, bark coloring is different. So This plant is called Sweet Sicily, but there's some poisonous plants that look like this as well, so you should, um, it smells like aniseed. Be careful.
Let's go look at some rhododendron. It's hot and sunny today, I think about... I think it's around 20 degrees Celsius. Some of this rhododendron really is the size of a tree. I've never noticed these before. These look very cute. I wonder what these are. Ghost tree is blooming again. Such a weird and interesting tree. It has a very interesting smell actually. It's somewhat spicy. Mm. It reminds me of papaya for some reason. Peppery papaya. Mm. Look at how fuzzy and fluffy these are. I don't know half of the plants in here. <laughs> 